On the foreign since Croatia is extending its coronavirus lockdown for another 15 days, Interior Minister Davo Bozinovic said on Saturday, but added that the government was looking at whether it was possible to gradually ease restrictions on movement. A month ago, the government closed all the shops, bars, restaurants, schools and public transport, leaving open only foodstuffs, pharmacies and petrol stations. Croats have been allowed to leave their homes to buy essentials or seek medical treatment. Go for a walk or do an exercise, but not in a group and avoiding social contact. Many people have been working also from home. Croatia has recorded 1,832 cases of COVID-19 with 39 deaths also. And on Saturday, the number of new infections rose by 18, which is the lowest a daily uh, increase registered since March the 17th. And now we are being joined via Skype from Alberta, Canada, uh, by Dr. Francis Okolie, who is a family physician. Good afternoon, doctor. I believe it's morning where you are. Hi, Amaka. Good afternoon. Yes, it's uh, it's morning here. All right, good to have you. Uh, could you bring us up to speed with the reality? What's the situation in Canada as of today? Well, um, as of today, uh, the situation is not as bad as we are finding it in neighboring USA. Um, we've got about over a thousand deaths recorded, uh, mortality cases at the moment. Um, but in Alberta here, the, the mortality rate is quite low. We, we're, we have deaths at about 50 so far. So, so um, that is comparatively very good for, for a large province. Why do we have that difference in numbers? What are you doing differently that maybe other states have not started doing or are not doing enough? Um, that's a good question. I think, um, for one, in, in Alberta, they were quite uh, proactive and they took um, steps quickly to to contain uh, the disease. For instance, um, here they they stopped, uh, they, they closed the schools quite early. They went into a partial lockdown quite early. And we're seeing the fruits of that. Like I said, the, the cases in Alberta are, are relatively few and, and the deaths are very few. In addition to that, um, they, they opened up centers where you could get people tested. So what you don't find here, you don't find people with COVID-like symptoms coming into private uh, clinics. So. In our clinic, for instance, if you've got a cough, if you've got sore throat, if you've got a fever, if you've got lethargy symptoms, if you've recently been in contact with someone who's had COVID or COVID-like symptoms, we, we would not see you in the clinic. We would rather call you over the phone, triage you, and then if we think uh, you, you're safe enough to be seen in the clinic, we'll, we'll see you. But generally, family physicians are not seen such patients in, in the clinic. All right, let's talk about uh, those who are on the front lines, especially medical mm -hmm. practitioners like yourself, uh, those who are mm -hmm. in the healthcare system also. Uh, we've seen news uh, recently of such people getting infected and in some cases, unfortunately, uh, dying. Does that suggest that uh, the, the health workers are already overwhelmed in the face of this crisis? Well, uh, that's part of it. Um, health workers are overwhelmed because um, everybody is worried. You have everyone with a, a cough presenting with, uh, to, to, to the health facilities. You have people who are having fevers for maybe other things presenting to the health facilities. And, but everyone has to be treated as a potential COVID patient. So it's, it, it's, it's overwhelming and it's risky. And it's risky, as um, as you know, the the statistics are very high. Over a hundred health workers lost their lives in um, in um, Italy, with eighty about eighty family physicians lo losing their lives in in, in Italy. And, and the same is is, is happening in in, um, in in England at the moment, and the same in the states. I think it's it's less so here, but. Um, Yes, it's overwhelming, but you know that's that's the call to the profession. It's the risk um, we we have to take as doctors. 
I mean, the figures, like you rightly put it there, uh, they are increasing. Uh, in some places exponentially, in some places not exactly. Um, in yeah. your opinion, are we going to stay with, what are your projections? Some people have projected that we might have to deal with COVID-19 for a lot more uh, longer than uh, we thought or imagined. Do you agree to this? Yes, I think, um, I, I personally think that um, this virus is going to be around for a while. Um, at the moment, like you probably know, there are no, no documented medications that would actually treat the virus. Um, there have been a few postulations that certain antimalarials and antibiotics help. But, um, but this, the, there's no concrete evidence to that. So the answer really is going to lie with vaccines. Um, and we don't know when um, the vaccines are going to come out. Um, we researchers have been trying for the last two, three decades to get a vaccine for, for HIV, and they have not succeeded in doing that. Um, and then for the, for the COVID-19 virus, I, 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 don't, I don't really think it's going to be too soon. But having said that, researchers, uh, researchers uh, in Canada, in the States, and in England appear to be, to be making progress, and clinical trials have already started in some, in some centers. Um, but I, 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 I still think it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. All right, let's come back home uh, to Nigeria. Today, of course, unfortunately, we lost the chief of staff, Abakiari, to COVID-19, making him the first uh, high-profile uh, individual that has passed in this country as a result of COVID-19. And I'm not sure whether you were a chance to look at the visuals or to see some of the pictures uh, from that burial today. But what we saw is that there were people cramped together. There were a number of persons there, more than 10, more than 20, uh, you know, um, it, is, it, it, it is important for us to know uh, why social distancing should be uh, taken seriously. Could you again once, you know, once again reiterate for you know, benefits of those who may have forgotten, why is it important that we, um, you know, adhere to the directives of social distancing and, you know, social contact during this time? Okay, yeah. Yes, um... Thank you. I, I, I did see a video this morning before I left home on, uh, on the burial of uh, um, Malam Kari and my condolences to his family. Um, I, think, I think the main thing with COVID-19 is education. I think, um, I think people really need to understand the reality of this virus. The, the, this virus is deadly. This virus sweeps through the land and kills in thousands, you know. So I don't think people appreciate um, how deadly the coronavirus is. And, and that reflects in, in the behavioral pattern I have observed in, in, um, in Nigeria over, over the last few weeks from watching videos and clips of, uh, of things going on. And, and, and that takes us to what what's, um, I saw this morning, um, where at the burial ceremony, you know, you had everyone crowded together. Now, the point is, this the, this virus is highly contagious. We all know that, and it's deadly. It, it is very very important that to avoid being contaminated and to break the cycle, we need to we need to really exercise social distancing. It is very, very important. Uh, I guess the problem with Nigeria is that um, we're such a large population and we're used to being together. It's, it's probably going to be very difficult to educate people and get them to understand why they should be spaced together, uh, spaced away from themselves and not being um, in, in, together in crowds. Maybe the reality may strike, and I hope not, but maybe the reality may strike when the mortality rate begins to increase because it's very, it's sometimes very difficult for you to appreciate how bad a situation is without an experience. So a lot of the things that Nigerians, are, uh, Nigerians know is what they've heard, you know, but they are not seeing the reality of the virus. And that's why, that's why you know, when you watch, um, when you watch television, you watch court cases, you find lawyers and everyone 
all cramped up together in court. You you watch burials. In fact, people, I'm still surprised that people are going for burial ceremonies in their numbers because you would not have expected to see that. But but yes, I, I, a lot of this has to do with education. But I'm not really sure we'll be able to get far um, to, to the masses without without people really experiencing what's going on. Dr. Okole, thank you so very much for your time, and we well, say keep safe where well. you are. All right.